Thank you, Tanya. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worship and Atonement. I am happy to be with you this morning. Pastor Linda's out of town. Um, I've had a nice two weeks off, and I'm excited to be home here in my own church this morning. Um, I've been traveling around to different country churches and, and areas filling in lately, and so it's nice to be home with my faith family. So welcome. I have a few announcements. Um, next Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday, and Pastor will would love to have the children help her say farewell to Alleluia as we look forward to Lent beginning. Um, also next week, the church council will be having a fun activity for us to take part in about visioning and mission. So stay tuned for more of that. Um, you received the news and notes of upcoming events. We do have our blood drive here tomorrow. So if you are still interested, um, Ardina is here this morning and she's the chair on that. So you can contact her if you, if you're able and wish to give blood. Any visitors? Um, I take it we have the visitor cards back out in the pews. Um, go ahead and fill out a visitor card and, and just place in the offering buckets at the back of the church. And we would love to be able to visit with you. Our mission of the quarter is Red Willow Ministries. Please, please keep them in your thoughts and prayers for the, for the quarter. Sign up for Coffee Fellowship is on the back of the nursery window, so we would appreciate your help there also. Let's see, what else? Oh, at the after service today, um, we will need some help uh, to take down tables and chairs in the fellowship hall to get ready for the blood drive tomorrow. So anyone that is able to do that, um, we appreciate that help. Any announcements that I'm missing from those of you out there? All right, please stand as you are able. Let us take a few minutes to gather our hearts and our minds into the presence of God as we hear his words and his messages for the day. Let us start with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us so that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Thy Holy Wings. The hymn number is 792. That was a missing bulletin. The words are on your screens.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us sing verse 1 of our cantic canticle of praise. the day is one of my favorites from when I was growing up Catholic. It's the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi and it was one that we knew backwards and forwards and we would sing in a chant. I had thought of doing the chant today but I didn't want to hurt your ears. So <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 45, starting with the third verse. Many years after being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, Joseph reveals himself to them. Now the second in command in Egypt, Joseph reassures his brothers that God has used their evil intentions for good to preserve life during a devastating famine and Joseph forgives them. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him.
Our psalm is Psalm 37, starting with and we'll read it responsively. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, starting with the 15th verse. In the Apostles' Creed, we speak of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, using the metaphor of a planted seed and the story of Adam Paul reaches passionately about the Paul preaches passionately about the mystery of following Christ's perfect life into eternity. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed perhaps of wheat or of some other grain, but God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it was with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Please stand for the gospel. Our gospel is Alleluia. Love your enemies, and you will be children of the Most High. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Alleluia. Our gospel this morning is from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. Jesus continues to address a crowd of his disciples. He invites his followers to show radical love, blessing, forgiveness, generosity, and trust, even on enemies and outsiders. 
Living in harmony with God's intent brings the reward of overflowing blessing. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Here ends the gospel. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to take a couple minutes here. Um, I would like to read the gospel again, but out of the Message Bible this time. That's the contemporary translation. To you who are ready for the truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you and the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond, respond with the supple moves of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more payback. Live generously. Here is a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. Then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, do you expect a pat on the back? Run-of-the-mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that. I tell you, love your enemies. Help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created created identity the way our Father lives toward us, generously and graciously, even when we are at our worst. Our Father is kind, you be kind. Don't pick on people. Jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. That hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life, and you'll find life given back, but not merely given back. Given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. I often do the different translations in my sermons because it helps me understand a better perspective. It helps me see things in a different light, and I don't always understand the NSRV revision, <laughs> versions of the Bible. So sometimes it's nice to find a different way of, of talking about it. So today... Love your enemies. 
Ugh. Talk about timing on a message for today's society. We can remember the movie A Few Good Men, the famous courtroom scene where Tom Cruise as a lawyer is questioning or badgering Jack Nicholson, demanding the truth. And Jack Nicholson's response is, you can't handle the truth. Today's gospel asks us if we are ready for the truth. Love your enemies. If not that direct saying, how about keep your enemies close or keep your friends close and your enemies closer? Kill them with kindness. Returning hate for hate multiplies hate. Do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Always forgive your en enemies. Nothing annoys them more. The Bible tells us to love our neighbors and to love our enemies, probably because they are the same people. And I came across this quote from Martin Luther King Jr., and it was on this gospel. Now there is a final reason I think that Jesus says, love your enemies. It is this, that love has within it a redemptive power. And there is power there that eventually transforms individuals. Just keep being friendly to that person. Just keep loving them, and they can't stand it too long. Oh, they'll react in ways in the beginning. They react with guilt feelings. And sometimes they'll hate you a little more in that transition period. But just keep loving them. And by the power of your love, they will break down under the load. That's love, you see. It is redemptive, and this is why Jesus says love. There is something about love that builds up and is creative, and there is something about hate that tears down and is destructive. So love your enemies. That comes from the book A Knock at Midnight, inspiration from the great sermons of Martin Luther King, Jr. And I can't really say it much better but I can't leave it there for a sermon either. That's too short. Instead, I have to ask the Lord, what are you asking of us? Don't you know how hard it is to love our enemies? Love those that get under my skin? Love the one who can't seem to see reason? Love those in Washington who are making stupid statements and laws for us to follow? Love those who are always fighting in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, Africa, here at home. Love the one in the meeting with the big mouth who always has to have the last say. And love those relatives of mine who don't have a clue. His answer? Yes. Period. Bolded, underlined, in red. Yes. In verses 27 through 30, we hear about those who give us a hard time, slaps our face, grabs our shirt, takes unfair advantage. But we have been taught in our lives to stand up for ourselves, stand up against bullies, don't get used. So how does this fit? Love your enemies. God. Can't I do something else instead? Mission work, anything? Live in a leper colony, anything? When I read the first few verses, I go back to high school. Not anything I wish to repeat either. It was tough. Even then, the 19... <laughs> there, I came from a small town with 30 in my class, and most of them had known each other from birth if they weren't already related. And I was always just on the edge or the fringe of the popular crowd, the sports crowd. And as my children like to remind me, the band geeks and the drama crowd. I was smart, but not the smartest. The one others wanted to copy from for some reason, respected by the teachers, a goody two-shoes. Both of my parents worked, but we didn't have money for extras. But I was the first to have the passed down family car to drive because my dad got me a part-time job for me to get to. So overall, a relatively normal life from the outside. But I was also bullied, called names, pranked, talked about in not very nice ways, a little on the heavy side for most of my, my school days, 
and I was just kind of there. So try telling a teenager to love their enemies in an environment like that. And my kids would have told me, yeah, whatever, Mom, you don't know. You don't know anything. But now I can recognize that some of that bullying came because I was average in most areas. I was also independent enough to not need a crowd around me. And I was nice to all, no matter which group or clique I was talking to, but still bullied. I appeared to be comfortable with where I was, even though underneath I was a wreck. And I can see now I needed help back then to understand the why behind the actions and words of these so-called friends or enemies. God tells us to do to others as you would have them do to you. How do you want to be treated and do that to others? Let them bring out the best in you. So what does that mean? I've talked about my brother Andrew and my son Eric having a hard time being around each other for a period of time. Anything over an hour is probably pushing it. My brother lived with us for nine months after he finished college and our parents had been gone, so it was the logical choice to come stay with us. And that was about eight months too long. Eric was a senior at the time and they were in each other's space too much. They complained about the other to me a lot but what they couldn't see and refused to admit that what they didn't like in the, in the one was one of their traits and weaknesses in themselves. They brought out the worst in each other and they fought against it. So think about those around you who irk you. What is it about them that just makes your skin burn and your skin crawl? Is it something you don't like in yourself? As your enemies attack you in whatever form, think about why they may be doing this. What is their perspective and their perception? Is it jealousy? You seem smarter, stronger, healthier, wealthier, have it all. Is it just a bad day and you were a convenient target? They knew you could take it and not let it affect you. They don't have any control in their lives, so they lash out. We have the sayings, until you walked a mile in their shoes. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors, and we are not in the minds of others. So when those enemies are at the gate and they're just doing it you in, take the time to think about the other person, your so-called enemy. If the situation were reversed and you were the one to lash out, what would you like to happen? Have you ever had those days you're ready for a fight? And who is the most convenient person to fight with but your spouse or a sibling? You can see the steam just coming out of your ears. You're about ready to blow. They come in the room, they say something that triggers. And you just let them have it. But they don't fight back. In fact, they agree with you. Yeah, and it's something simple. Yeah, I forgot to take out the garbage. Yeah, I forgot to pick up my clothes. I forgot about the kids. Because it is never the big stuff that makes us lose our minds on those days, is it? You just kind of go, wait, huh? I want to scream and yell, but they took the wind right out of my sails. And you're not reacting like I want you to. Don't worry, that's not Mark. <laughs> but is this how our enemies come at us? Is this how we could love our enemies? Perception. Who knows you better than the person who's been at your side through it all over the years? They diff diffuse the bomb that was quicker than MacGyver. So why can't we do the same with our enemies? We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be acknowledged, believed, and counted. And isn't that the same for our enemies? Or rather, the quiet classmate, the bully in the boardroom, 
the obnoxious neighbor, and the clueless relative. We can't forget anyone in that manner as it applies to all. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This goes beyond loving our enemies. This goes beyond those who are just like us. And this goes beyond what will I get out of it. This is stepping outside our comfort zones. Going above and beyond for all. Those who are poor, weary, out of work, no home, who may smell a little bit and who live out of a cardboard box. This is for accepting those who have hugely different opinions, different skin color, different religion, different upbringing, different nationality, or gender identity differences. It is easy to love those who are similar. Educate yourselves to better understand others. You will find more in common than you think with your enemies. Ask questions. Research. Put yourself out there. Perspective and perception need a moment. Again, think about the why behind someone's words or actions. Think about the why behind your reaction. And little steps towards understanding your enemy will help you better understand how to love them. I like the message of don't pick on people, jump on their failures, or criticize their faults. Someone is watching you too and tearing you apart. Be nice. The gospel tells us to give away your life. You'll find life given back. What you put out into the universe comes back to you a hundredfold. We could say it is karma. Karma can be a brat and come back to bite you. But think of what you did or didn't do to someone. I like to say God has his laughs on us too as a reminder to love our enemies, especially when someone we didn't like, respect, or want to know is suddenly in our circle and we find out more about them. We are no longer assuming what we know and we were finding we misjudged a lot. I usually give a nod towards heaven to acknowledge I know what he did here. Just another reminder to love one another, treat each other as you wish to be treated, and your reward will be great. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I do not go out of my way to love my enemy or those who are different than me. Help me to find a way to understand those who may attack me and I work with your help to better understand those who I attack. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Our hymn of the day is number 804, No Greater Love.
Please stand for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Can you come to judge the living and the dead? I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table and nourish us with your heavenly food. Prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. We thank you for giving of your time, your talents, and financials. You are an offering. Let us pray the prayers of, of intercession. I will say, God of grace, please respond with your prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. <clears throat> you teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have first received mercy. God of grace. Amen. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest. And guard against famine and disease. God of grace. Look upon our world with mercy, that we may delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness mend broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, and strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. We pray especially for Corey, Carol, Bill, and Marilyn. And we extend prayers of sympathy to Karen and her family in the death of her mother, Alice. God of grace. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and in faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray the words that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Our sending song is on the sheet that was handed out with your bulletin, Build a Longer Table. We're going to give this one a shot. Christ into a weary world, share the good news. Have a blessed week, everyone.